and welcome to another video on Spot On with Shruti. This one, we continue with the most common function shapes that we had started in the last video. And so we just have a remainder of few more and we'll be set to understand these common function shapes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's continue and get started. As always, you see on the screen, I have made the preparation already. So the first shape is, this is called an exponent shape. As you can see on the screen, this is an exponent shape where we have a base A, which can be any real number, but greater than two. Why we are saying greater than two? Because if you raise a number, like if you raise one to any kind of exponent X, its value will always end up being one. So the minimum number that you can have for the base is going to be two. Now, can, are there graphs for negative numbers or fraction numbers? Yes, you can have the base number A as any number other than one or zero, right? So let's keep it simple. And for simplicity's sake, uh, we are going to keep it at A equal to two. So what we're looking for is a function of X for Y equal to two power X. And when you solve, that means uh, you take the base A when X is minus two, two power minus one, two power zero, two power one, two power two, and the values which I have already calculated turn out to be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, uh, for 1 it is going to be, I'm sorry, 2, and 4, right? And as you can see, these are the values on the screen as I've written. Now the shape that this takes is going to be a shape like, which resembles like this, okay? And it cuts the x-axis, or oh, sorry, the y-axis at the point one and then kind of goes up from there like there's a sharp actually there's going to be a sharp turn here so let me just go ahead and erase that and show you so this is going to be a very like exponentially it goes up and this is typically what you see on the graph it just cuts at this is the two power x so this is the exponential shape here now when we look at the negative x-axis so as the x values are below zero meaning they're in the negative direction right here you see our output for the function approaches zero it kind of laces on top of this line let me choose another color here so you can see the difference that i'm talking about so it kind of like this region right here it keeps approaching it glides over on top of the x-axis but never overlaps it never touches it so these will be the asymptote lines which is a concept we are going to learn in forthcoming videos as well. But for now, this is the parent shape of what we call an exponential function. Okay, moving on, which is basically the next function in line. And uh, you have already gone through it on one of my prior videos. And if not, I will link, uh, if you would like, uh, you can learn about logarithms as well. But one more time, the basic function shape here for a function called log of x is going to be f of x is equal to log base of b and which is written as this way and i've already gone ahead and given you the definition which is interpreted as b power y equal to x meaning to what exponent are we going to raise the base b of the logarithmic function to figure out the answer a and the base that we have considered for the graph is going to be 10 and as you can see on the screen, the x values I have written for this function are only going to be 0, 1, 2, 3 I've written. I've not written, actually, as a matter of fact, this is going to be undefined. Why? Because if the, your x value is 0, meaning what will you raise the base 10 to to get a 0? So that is basically going to be undefined because there is, doesn't exist that kind of a number. Hence we have written undefined for zero. For one, these are zeros. And for two, this is going to be a 0 0.3010 value. For log of three, it is going to be 0 0.4771. Now, once again, if you would like, you can go ahead and use a calculator, key in these exact values into the calculator and you will get the same decimal answers. But when we plot these values, the shape that we end up getting 
which I've also shown once again in a prior video, are going to be, it starts off at the negative y-axis and it kind of loops at uh, roughly, you can think of it looping at, it crosses the x-axis at one and then it kind of slowly exponentially goes up like that. So meaning to say it will keep going up. But when we look at the y-axis, meaning as your x value is approaching zero from, as you look at it from the right side, then uh, as you look at it from the right side, then the y values keep going down. So it exponentially drops. But as soon as it approaches this cutoff, the x-intercept, it shoots up again as x value increases your y value goes towards plus infinity, but at a very slower pace. But as it approaches towards zero, it is going downward towards negative infinity. And those also define the domain and ranges of these functions. We will go over the domain and ranges on a subsequent video. All right, now the last shape that we have is going to be, it is called a reciprocal function. So let me write that down as you see, reciprocal function where, we have our x, meaning the input variable x, which is nothing but the reciprocal. Now, once more time here, you see I've written a zero. What is a one over zero? It will give you an error message if you were to key it into your calculator. So this is going to be undefined as always. And I've already gone ahead and calculated the values. This is going to be negative 0.5. So what does that tell you? It goes in both negative and positive directions, as you will see. 2 is 0.5, and if let's say x was a 3, we will get 1 over 3, which is going to be 0.333. So once we go less than 0, meaning the input is less than 0, we will have a negative. So which looks like the shape actually will, it will start curving at minus 2 roughly, and then minus 1 and 1, we have a point. To be accurate, I'm just going to say it, so it kind of goes like that. Let me just show you. This is the shape we're talking about. And on the positive, meaning when you have x values greater than zero, you will see the same shape. And again, it curves at a one comma one here. So it looks like this. So you have both horizontal and vertical asymptotes, meaning the graph as it approaches the x and the y. Let me show it to you here. As it approaches the x axis here, it approaches the x-axis, but it never overlaps it. It just keeps going sliding downward and even in the negative y direction. And it does so when x values are less than zero. On the positive side, meaning when the x values are positive, it keeps going in the y values also kind of like increase. And you can see what happens to the y. So you have asymptotes on both the sides. And we will talk about asymptotes and how these graphs lineup. That is it for the video. So if you like this presentation and you would like to continue learning more and more about mathematical concepts, do let me know and keep your emails coming. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.